we're going to have to wait for some of these military absentee ballots to come in. And it's worth doing because it protects the process for all of us. This is an election like no other for so many reasons, especially because we are in the midst of this pandemic where mail-in absentee voting has become more important than ever. President Trump has attacked the process of mail-in voting um, frequently throughout the election. So what can you tell people, having, having voted absentee um, yourself for so long, about the safety of, and security of this process? As we say in the military, bottom line up front, uh, absentee voting is secure. And we demonstrated that again and again, not only in the military cohort, but in many states that have had absentee balloting for decades. I am absolutely confident that it is a 99.99% positive rate on these ballots. So anything that uh, is thrown out there in the prospect of um, undermining voter confidence I think is a real attempt to undermine our elections. And I'll close by saying we have seen uh, the Russians very specifically intrude in this election using bots, using the Internet to undermine confidence in absentee balloting. It is secure. I've used it for decades. The entire U.S. military relies on it, and we are very confident in it. I'm glad you brought up foreign interference because I would I would like to hear more from you on that topic. But in terms of the process of counting military ballots, do you know how, how long it usually takes? I know it varies state by state, but it feels yeah. like that's one reason why we should be patient about the count. Um, you've got it exactly right. It is going to take um, days in some states, and it might even take a week or more in other states that have very large uh, military population serving, in some cases, overseas. Mm -hmm. Some of these sailors are on ships at sea. When they put their ballot in the mailbox on the ship, it'll sit there for several days. Um, often, as long as a week, it'll then be airlifted from a small ship to a big ship, and then that big ship will fly an airplane into a, 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 an airport, often a civilian one, sometimes a military one, then that ballot comes home. Here's what's important, Versha. Every one of those ballots is meaningful and must be counted. And we have to respect that if a ballot is postmarked before Election Day, it is a good ballot. I think any American would agree with that. So we're going to have to wait for some of these military absentee ballots to come in. And it's worth doing because it protects the process for all of us. Now, President Trump has said he thinks we should know the results tonight or, or the night of November 3rd, and, and states shouldn't take too long to count ballots. But it sounds like in that case, he is actually discounting military ballots. It is, and it, it definitely has that feeling. And I think any active duty military person, particularly those who are forward deployed in Iraq and Syria and Afghanistan on aircraft carriers in the Arabian Gulf or in the Taiwan Straits, their votes deserve to be counted. And that means that regardless of when they get back to Tallahassee, in the case of Florida, it's when they were stamped and in the U.S. postal system that counts. So I think the president is making a mistake in terms of how he approaches the military. I don't think that will help him with the military contingent, so to speak. And more importantly, he does damage to the veracity and the integrity of our electoral process system by criticizing it in that manner. Well, Trump has also had a contentious record when making remarks about military service members, as we've seen this year in, in Atlantic articles. It's something that Joe Biden has criticized him for, given that his son was active in the Army National Guard. What have you heard from your fellow service members about the kind of rhetoric that we've heard? Um, I'll give it to you as a personal set of comments, and then I'll mention a poll, a very significant poll that demonstrates the veracity of the personal comments. Okay. From many, many military personnel, very senior to mid-grade, even some enlisted people who were on my team when I was uh, Supreme Allied Commander of NATO, um, universally have been discouraged by President Trump's comments about the military as reported. 
And even though President Trump denies certain of those comments, for example, he called uh, Senator John McCain, an American hero who spent uh, years in a Vietnamese prison camp, a loser for being captured. So whether or not the other specific incidents are true, that one's on the record, Versha. So I've heard that again and again personally, and the poll I would point you to is the Military Times polling of the active duty military. It shows a flip in support for President Trump, which went from about 60% support in 2016 to around 40% today. A great deal of that I would attribute to the president's comments. That is, that is a significant shift in four years. And I think people have thought, you know, military traditionally kind of skews maybe conservative politically or, or favors Republicans, but that doesn't seem to be the case this year. It does not. And in addition to the specific comments about those who have sacrificed everything for the country, we also see President Trump um, often take the position that our allies aren't important. We shouldn't care about NATO. We shouldn't care about the Japanese. He has a very transactional approach to how the U.S. military forward deploys. Here's a news flash: People in the U.S. military like our allies. They're proud to serve alongside them, and they are not transactional. They're not out there to be mercenaries to try and get funding back to the United States for forward deploying. They're out there for an ideal, to be part of something greater than themselves. I don't think the president appreciates that. And finally, uh, the president's own ethical conduct is often questioned by those in the military, going all the way back to uh, his uh, avoiding service in the war in Vietnam, where he was drafted by a very questionable claim of bone spurs um, about which there is a great deal of controversy. You can pull that behavior piece forward. It does not sit well with the active duty, the veterans, or the retired community. For all those reasons, his support has been slipping. And I'll close on this point. Um, many, many Republicans uh, have endorsed Joe Biden, particularly in the national security space. And that's quite significant to me um, as I look at President Trump and his challenges in the night ahead.